Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you six reasons why no one watches Magic the Gathering. Uh, reason, so Magic the Gathering is 30th on Twitch. Hearthstone, to give you an idea, is normally second for, their, for the same category. That's a huge difference. So the low, lowliest Hearthstoner on a Wednesday mid-afternoon can have more <laughs> viewers on Twitch than the Magic Pro Tour. Uh, I think the Magic Pro Tour caps its views at 27,000. And that's the most it's ever had, so that's a little crazy. So, small prize pools. Uh, number one, small prize pools. Uh, it's not exciting, there's the numbers don't make sense. I know they're trying to change that, and that's why they cut the Platinum Pro. But it, in my opinion, had they, had they, there's no promises, the contract doesn't say they have to pay them, but it's just respectable if someone works that hard during this year to, for, to get that reward next year, you gotta keep that promise from next year. Beyond that, you know, there could be announcement at the last Pro Tour of this year saying, hey, no more Platinum Pro after 2017, which then most players would probably accept. Uh, would, would be a lot more acceptable than saying mid-season, hey, no more. So prize pools compared to other like League of Legends and I'm watching MSI right now, and it just doesn't compare, right? It cannot, you can compare, it's apples and oranges. The price pool for the Pro Tour, 250000 might seem like a lot of money, but compared to other esports, it's not. Secondly, low production values. Um, they don't, I mean, if you look at, League of Legends is probably the best example of a high production value. TVs everywhere, monitors everywhere, uh, whenever the people are picking their champions, the champions pop up on screen, you know, the it seems like a TV show. It seems like a TV show that you would watch on Netflix only. It's the commentary is very colorful. It's, but when I see magic, the screen sometimes don't work. Like when someone's drafting, sometimes they put the camera on like the wrong position and you can't see what cards they're picking. And simple mistakes like that, which I don't know how it can happen, but it happens all the time where you you just feel like it's some dude on YouTube making comment making videos where it's not professional. Uh, it just doesn't feel or seem professional from a production standpoint. And editing, don't get me started on editing. Like the investment is not in not there. It's not a stadium like League of Legends has stadiums everywhere where the screens are huge, spectators can come and watch, they pay money, just like any football game or a basketball. It's more like a basketball game, actually. And you, you get it, you, you absolutely get it. Uh, next, weak commentary. So we have low production value, we have uh, small price pools, low production value, and weak commentary. You need to hire and train, or you have to do something about it. It's improved a lot. I give them credit for that, but it's still not at the level that it should be at the level of, given the fact that you have all these pros. And the Moises the Coach says, oh, we can't use pros. And I'll get to that later, the Hasbro's argument of why they need to cut Platinum or one of their compelling arguments. Use pros. That's the way to put, that's the way to use pros in the most effective way. It's because they understand the game. They know what's the lines are, they know how to play, they know what's going to happen next and that's really good for a player, a new player to get because the pro can simplify it because they know what's happening, what's going to happen and what the options are. What. So the commentary, I don't want to say it's bad, it's just not on the level of esports. Like it's not entertaining, these people are kind of boring and dry and they just don't have the, uh, like so, so black from, um, She's like a model. She was a model and then she got into this and she kept going and she got better and better and better and it was the same person the whole time. Same with League of Legends in North America. And they've just had so much practice doing it that they can say stuff and, it, and they already know what's going to happen. Next, the cards. You cannot read the cards. That's a very big problem. Like, this gets into the next problem. I'm going to combine the not reading the cards to difficult to follow. It's really difficult to follow. If you've never played this game, how would you know what's happening when you can't even read the cards because they're in like tiny fonts? Like, and then now they use, they make, they force even the drafting part to be in sleeves, which kind of makes sense, but it kind of doesn't. It's like all this glare and like, try to figure out if you are a non-magic player, you know, 
bring your parents, your girlfriend, whoever, your friend, your best friend, and if they've never played Magic, show them. Like, show them a Twitch stream and ask them, hey, do you know what's going on? And the answer is no, they have no clue. They cannot read the cards. The cards are unreadable. And that's that's a huge, huge problem because who who knows what's going on? If you're not a Magic player, you have no idea what's going on. Um, so it's you cannot get the audience that uh, the uh, broader band of audience that you can normally get. Difficult to follow. One of the reasons it's difficult to follow is I can't read the cards and the complexity of the interactions is too complex. It's not like Hearthstone where even if you don't know how to play the game, you can kind of figure out who's winning, who's losing. Uh, and the last, but the probably the most significant reason that Magic has no viewership on YouTube, Twitch, compared as compared to esports, it's a very narrow audience. It's not Magic players. If there's 15 million Magic players or 12 million, how many million Magic players we believe exist? And at most, 27,000 of them are watching a Magic stream. At most, that's the peak. Then what is the rest of them doing? Because they're obviously not interested in the Pro Tour. They're obviously not interested in watching Magic. And it's a very narrow audience who your viewership is, and you need to broaden that audience to people who play the game, who are more casual. And you know, imagine a casual player, and they only buy a few decks, and they like the game, they play with their friends at school or whatever. They get their Pro Tour, it's all Mythics. This Mythic, that Mythic. They've never seen these cards before. I mean, again, they're Mythics. You know, what is Jace? Like, what, why is he flipping? Like, oh, why is he flashing back something? I don't get it. Yeah. Because at most, maybe one kid in that entire middle school has a Jace, and they probably tra got trade shark from uh, from an older kid or something. So it doesn't make sense because the casual crowd is largely ignored by the pro tour. The pro tour is for people who are good at magic or who want to become at the top level, and that's not the way it should be. Like you should have a basic level of understanding and to promote the game to your supposed audience of 12 to 15 million people. Even if you got 10% of that audience to watch, just 10%, that would be 1.5 million people. That would be just similar to Dota, uh, D-O-T-A 2. Um, and that would be similar, even if you got 1%, you would get 150,000 people, which would be similar to Hearthstone. Are you saying you cannot get 1%? Then there's really a problem if you can't get 1% of your audience to watch something just one time because they're not, there's no interest in it. Anyway, that's it. I'll leave a comment below. Let's have a delightful discussion about how we can improve the game. What are some problems? Uh, are there any problems I've missed? Anyway, bye guys.